I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. I'm gonna tell you something straight off the motherfucking press. I ain't coming for no foolishness. Okay, so remember back in June when Jon Stewart went uh, on Stephen Colbert's show and he was talking about the lab leak? Tell you, I'm what, 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 you, what, 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 what do you mean by? Do you mean like there's, 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 there's a chance that this is created in a lab? There's an investigation. A chance? Well, I'm, I, so, I, 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 oh I, my if god, there's evidence. I'd love to hear. There's a know. novel respiratory coronavirus overtaking Wuhan, China. What do we do? Oh, you know who we could ask? The Wuhan novel respiratory coronavirus lab. The disease is the same name as the lab. <laughs> That's just, that's just a little too weird, don't you think? And then the national scientists are like, how did this... So wait a minute, you work at the Wuhan Respiratory Coronavirus Lab. How did this happen? And they're like, mm, a pangolin kissed a turtle. And you're like, no. I, you, you, the wait, name wait, of your lab, wait. I mean, look at the name. Look at the name. Can I, let me see your business card. Show me your business card. Oh, I work at the Coronavirus Lab in Wuhan. Oh, because there's a coronavirus loose in Wuhan. How did that happen? Maybe a bat flew into the cloaca of a turkey and then it sneezed into my chili and now we all have coronavirus. Like, come on. Okay, wait, wait, okay. Wait, 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 what about this? What about this? Wait a second. Wait a second. All right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's been an outbreak of chocolatey goodness near Hershey, Pennsylvania. What do you think happened? Like, oh, I don't know. Maybe a steam shovel made it with a cocoa bean. Or it's the chocolate factory maybe that's it that could be now obviously john stewart is a comedian so he framed it as a joke but sometimes the best jokes are based in truth right um he was the right guy to publicly acknowledge this i think because we all know that the media loves john stewart and uh i mean you can't really paint him as a bigot you can't call him stupid or anything like that because everyone knows how intelligent he is um, it is just an insane coincidence that the virus originated in the same city that they were experimenting in, and uh, pretty much anyone else who questioned the Wuhan lab was labeled as a racist, right? And I think the biggest reason for this is Donald Trump uh, was one of the first people, or maybe even the first person, to say that the virus came from a lab. And, uh, you know, whenever Donald Trump endorses anything, it's immediately criticized. Uh so basically, the narrative became that if you agree with Trump on any subject, you're a bigot. You cannot, under any circumstances, agree with him on any topic. If Trump says that 1 plus 1 equals 2, you're still not allowed to agree with him. Which is why I was really happy to see Jon Stewart talking about this now, and uh, finally we can add some nuance to the topic, right? Remember back in the old days when we used to have nuanced discussions? Dude, that was only like five years ago. What the fuck happened? Anyway, so new information came out recently, and uh, the NIH submitted a document to Congress last Wednesday, and uh, in the document, they admit that they did fund gain-of-functions research at the Wuhan lab. Um, so the National Institute of Health awarded $7.5 million over five years to EcoHealth Alliance, but uh, they deny knowing exactly what they funded, right? Uh, apparently, at the lab, they were doing experiments that involved different coronaviruses and bats. Shocker. Uh, but they claim that these experiments did not cause the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So why'd you lie about it then? Uh, this doesn't make any sense. Dr. Fauci, knowing that it is a crime to lie to Congress... Do you wish to retract your statement of May 11th where you claimed that the NIH never funded gain-of-function research in Wuhan? Senator Paul, I have never lied before the Congress, and I do not retract that statement. This paper that you are referring to was judged by qualified staff up and down the chain as not being gain-of-function. So what was? Let me take, finish. You take an animal virus and you increase its yeah, transmissibility yeah. to humans. Right. You're saying that's not gain of function. Yeah, that is correct. And and Senator Paul, you do not know what you are talking about, quite frankly. And I want to say that officially, you do not know what you are talking about. Let's okay, you get NIH. one person. Let's read from the NIH Adam, Chair, definition can I answer of gain the of function. This is your definition that you guys wrote. It says that scientific research that increases the transmissibility among mammals is gain of function. 
They took animal viruses that only occur in animals, and they increased their transmissibility to humans. How you can say that is not gain of function? It is not. It's a dance, and you're dancing around this because you're trying to obscure responsibility for four million people dying around the world okay. from a pandemic. Uh, <laughs> Why do I feel like Randy Boy over here is going to try to run for president again or some shit? But anyways, I'm trying to make the point that I'm trying to make is that Anyone who talked about the lab leak theory was branded as a bigot. It was called misinformation. People were censored, deplatformed, banned from YouTube. And then now, after it's proven to be true, do they apologize? You know, do they admit that they were wrong for censoring people? Nope. Nope. So when conservatives say that this all proves that Fauci has not been honest, is that right? Is that what it proves? No, that's not how I look at it. I think it's important to understand the intent of the research and the effect of the research. So the intent of the research was to understand whether certain bat coronavirus spike proteins could infect human cells. And the way they did the experiment was they took a well-known bat coronavirus called WIV1, and they added to that some uh, other bat uh, coronavirus spike proteins and they gave that to mice altered to have the receptor, the ACE2 receptor that humans have that the virus uses to enter human cells. And what they found was, yes, they could, uh, those spike proteins could enter human cells. Uh, but they also noticed that the enhanced virus then was more virulent. Okay. So, so, so they proved that, they, that those spike proteins could enter human cells. But in so doing, they made the virus they used uh, more deadly, essentially. The, the, the mice were sicker. So yes, the net effect was to gain function for the virus that they altered, but it does not appear, at least you know, from uh, the documents provided by NIH, that that was the intent of the research. So the way I look at it, uh, Dr. Fauci and his colleagues were answering truthfully, uh, it has to do with the intent and then the, the effect. When you get caught lying on national television, right, and then you double down on that lie, um, it just kind of adds to the skepticism that people have towards the news, right? Um, for example, um, with the Joe Rogan CNN fiasco, right, it got to the point where even the Washington Post, right, the shitty Washington Post, actually had to come out and tell CNN to fuck off, right? Um, they said uh, CNN's statement sounds more like the work of an advocacy group than a journalism outfit, right? The issue actually begins and ends with the integrity of CNN's content, right? You see, this is why I don't get my news from the mainstream anymore, you know? Um, I'm always talking about this podcast called Breaking Points, because um, with Crystal and Cigar, um, they, used to, they used to work for The Hill, I think, but now they're independent journalists, you know, so they're actually genuine, they're sincere. Um, they report on things that are actually important, right? Not, not, they're not just trying to get clicks, I think. At least that's what it seems like. For me, it seems like they report on things that are actually important. They covered the Prince Andrew thing. They covered Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, they even talk about UFOs sometimes. It's crazy. Uh, but um, Sagar, Sagar uh, he actually did a pretty good job of summarizing this whole lab leak situation. Here, check it out. All right, Sagar, what are you looking at? We've been talking about the Iraq war a lot here on the show lately, not just to relive the horror, but to remind you of how the media, the intelligence community, the government, all elite networks of power tasked with protecting us and informing us actually sold us out instead for a terrible war. Now, most importantly, we discuss it because the mechanisms through which that war were sold keep repeating in our elite culture again and again and again. The worst part is not that it was an accident, but that it appears now by design that the media and the people in power latch on to the stories of near complete fantasy and use their relative monopoly on cultural power in America to gaslight tens of millions of people from the truth. We saw Iraq WMD level screw ups in Russiagate. I didn't think I'd be lucky enough to see two of those in my lifetime, now let alone three, because it only took two years after Russiagate for the next one to arrive. And that is the lab leak hypothesis. In many ways, the lab leak developments are worse than Iraq on a purely media failure level. 
At least two years after the Iraq war, even the most warmongering journalists had to admit Saddam did not have weapons of mass destruction. Two years into Russiagate, the Mueller report came out and we knew all of what was what. But right now, it's been over two years since the Wuhan Institute of Virology took its database of samples offline, indicating a possible accident. It is actually almost two years to the day, right now, since the first likely coronavirus cases began spreading from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and today, the public and the media still will not accept their failure. Perhaps unlike Iraq WMD, in this case, the media literally needs this to be true, that the lab leak hypothesis didn't happen because it would have validated a single thing that Donald Trump once said. And in their stupidity, they elevated Dr. Anthony Fauci to prominence. Fauci and his connections to the Wuhan lab at this point are very well known. He worked for nearly two years to cover up his complicity in funding gain of function research at that facility. He has done so much with such absolute impunity now to this day because he knows that the mainstream media and the Dems will give him a free pass. I wish I could articulate myself like that. <laughs> but anyways, um, the NIH claims that the Eco Health Alliance violated the terms of their grant by uh, not reporting the experiments that they were doing on the bats. Um, the terms of the agreement require the lab to report all of its research findings back to the National Health Institute. So now Eco Health has five days to submit any and all unpublished data. But realistically, I mean, you're giving them five days, they're probably just going to shred everything. I mean, to be honest, they probably shredded everything already by now. You know, that's what I would have done. Dude, if I was the one responsible for this pandemic, I would shred everything and take it to my grave. All right. Almost five million people have died from this. Like, that They're certainly not going to take responsibility for it. I'd be surprised if they did. But, um... Anyways, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, do you believe Dr. Fauci about this? Absolutely not. Or do you believe that this all started from the lab in Wuhan? And, um, yeah, uh, I don't know how to end YouTube videos, so, uh, yeah, peace. <laughs>